Hey everybody, this is Kevin. I'm going to talk about the coronavirus and how it may be affecting you, how, how it's affecting us. Um, before we get to the financial implications, though, uh, I think it's important just to mention that people around the world right now, um, especially in some of the Asian countries, are suffering. Uh, they're stuck in their homes. They're very fearful. There's lots of pain, morbidity, mortality. Um, now, how this affects us right now is there's not a lot of people in the U.S. that are infected. Um, you know, if it gets worse, that, that may change. But right now, we're getting some questions about investments. And so what I'd like to do in this video is, is talk to you about uh, your financial plan. And uh, if you don't have a financial plan, this is a time to, to be motivated to get one, I think. Because uh, the thing that helps the most uh, when you have these short-term market um, you know, calamities, corrections, uh, the, the, you know, the S&P 500 and the Dow are down about 6%, uh, between 6 and 7%. And so that's from all-time highs, by the way. Uh, but it, it's very, very uh, difficult for human beings. We are social animals when we see that people are saying that stocks are plunging. Now, now to Charlie and I know if the market's going to go up or down. Heck no, we, we don't know. We don't know. But we, we really believe um, that this whole idea of doing something um, it is a bad decision. Now, now what, I'm, what am I basing this on? Well, I'm basing it on the fact that uh, timing the market is, is so difficult. So if, if we were able to go down this path here and we were able to get out of the market in a case with, with like coronavirus, if it is going to keep on going down, you know, right now it seems like it will, but, but we don't know that for sure. Uh, we've had other major events. I've been doing this for 11 years. I could probably name 20 events that have happened where people have said the market is going to continue to go down, and it's and it's not. Um, some of them it did. Uh, so in 2018, the market, people were saying it's going to go down. It went all the way down 19.7%, I think it was, from high to low. But anyway, if we could get out, if we could be on this road and get out before the market goes down and then get back in, after it's gone down, boy, that would be awesome. Um, the problem is, is not only do we not know anyone that's been able to do that consistently, we don't know anyone that knows anyone that can do it consistently. The reason for this is that you have to be almost 80% right, getting in and out at the right time, 80% of the time. It's a little less than 80, but almost 80, consistently to beat a buy and hold investor over the long run. So, again, is it better to pull out and hope that you're right? Um, you know, a number of people we've talked to, uh, they, they come to us and they have cash and they say, look, I pulled out, um, you know, five years ago during this crisis or I pulled out at this time. And uh, it's, it's hard. It's hard to get back in when the market then goes back up again. So, so you know, again, it's, it's about humility. Um, but getting back to the financial plan and getting back to the the part of the brain that's the, the frontal lobe, um, you know, money, your money, your brain, Jason Swig said, it's not our fault. Uh, fear comes into our mind in a millisecond. Fear. When we see things going in a bad direction, fear. It's a human emotion. It's from the time we ran from tigers and bears. We, we can't help it. The other thing he says is that there's a part of the brain called the insula, which when we start to regret a decision that we've made or not made, um, the insula is, is also the part of the brain that when we see rotten garbage and it smells and maybe there's maggots in the food, that's the part of the brain that lights up. And so that same visceral reaction happens when we regret that our values have gone down in our accounts. And it's, it's a human emotion. So, so how do we take the emotion out of it? Well, a financial plan right here, you'll, you see that this financial plan has a 90% success rate, okay? And these are all possible futures based on, on past results. Now, you see some of them are red. So there are times where if returns are really bad, a person could run out of money. Um, but most of them are, are positive. So, so I think a better idea than just looking at the short-term investment returns is, is look at your financial plan. Number one, number two. Um, let's look at let's look at a major crash here. Okay, 
let's look at um, the crash of 2008. Now, I started in 2007 at the very end. Um, I lived through this with people with real money, live money in portfolios. Uh, their portfolios, if they were 100% stock, went down 53%. 60-40 went down, you know, 32%. Um, and this is 40-60. But, you know, we lived through this. And, and what was the advice all during this? It was stay the course, stay the course, stay the course. A, a number of people in the firm, their clients wanted to fire them during this time period because they kept saying stay the course and they thought it was going to keep on going down. Now, it turned out to be okay. Now, past performance is not indicative of future results. have to say that. But um, a 60-40 portfolio, 08 um, to 09 to 10 was back above in two years. Now, this was a long two years. It wasn't like the last two years. Um, but looking over the long run, if you're in it for the long run, if you're an accumulator and you're in it for the long run, not only is this what happens with the money that you have invested today, if, if the market does go down, and I'm not predicting it's going to go down 30, 40%, even if it does go down and you are an accumulator, you know, it, it's painful to see the values go down, but you continue to accumulate all during this time period. So what if you have a 10-year time horizon? Well, a 10-year time horizon, um, you know, you're probably going to be okay. Um, now, the average investor, and this is from most studies, does worse. And right here, it's showing 1.9%. Now, I don't believe average investor does this bad. I don't, I don't believe it. But you know, most of the studies will show that their investments do better than what the average investor does. And, and why is that? Well, the average investor, you know, maybe they don't panic at the bottom, but they, they get out, they get in, they switch asset classes, they constantly do that. And then when you get to high parts, they start buying the really, um, the, you know, performance chasing. Uh, fees are a little bit of a part of it, but fees don't really ex explain these big differences. So over, this is a different time period here. This is over a 20-year time period. The S&P 500 did 5.6%. It was not a stellar 20-year time period, by the way. But anyway, the, the worst fear is that we're going to be involved in a crash. Many of the people we work with, many people with money are winners. That's why they have money. And even having short-term, hey, you're a loser because when you're going down like this, you feel like you're a loser. Your brain, your insula, regret, rotten garbage. You feel like a loser. Um, the best thing to do is to not pay attention to it. Um, again, if you have the right asset allocation, if you're not sure if you have it, uh, talk to us. Uh, let, let's talk about it. So the final thing I have is uh, 1987. I was a junior in college in 1987. Um, in one day, the markets were down 22.6% in one day, one day. The, these things can happen in stocks. And, and, and by the way, everything was looked okay up until this day, and then markets crashed down. Um, you know, markets are, have always been risky and will always be risky as far as the volatility of them. And if you're not going to invest for the long term, uh, you can have a problem. My, my teacher by the way, I was in investment analysis class, and my teacher did not come in for a week. He worked in a firm, and they didn't see it coming. Now, the, the good news for 1987 is that downturns happen often. They really do. On You know, uh, Goldman Sachs said there was going to be a 10% downturn because of coronavirus. Every year, there's on average a 13.8% drop at some point during the year. 13.8% inner year drop. And uh, in, in 1987, again, this is the reason I'm showing this, um, it actually dropped at 23 point whatever. I think it was 8 in one day. It was actually down 34% at some point. It finished up 2% on the last day of the calendar year. That's crazy. That's crazy, isn't it? So, you know, it can get very discouraging. Um, again, I would just suggest that, that you call us. Let's talk about your financial plan. Let's talk about, um, you know, your investment plan. And, um, you know, I would try not to take it too hard because there will be days like this. Uh, hopefully the coronavirus will get under control and, uh, and, you know, it'll be a blip 
You know, I, I think Ebola, to me, Ebola scared the, you know what, out of me because um, e Ebola, um, I had people call me crying about Ebola. And I had people, um, you know, my, my wife worked at the hospital. There was a, a couple Ebola uh, possible cases at Park West Hospital. It was, uh, it was kind of a scary time. And uh, now when we look back on it, it's just a blip. Um, so I hope that's what happens with this. Uh, and again, I would just suggest if your money is in there for a long period of time, if you're young, if you're accumulating, don't worry about it. If you're retired and you have enough cash and bonds, don't worry about it. Um, easy to say, right? But anyway, uh, hopefully I tried to put this in perspective. I really hope I did. So thanks so much.